Over the years, I have heard many tales of a hermit that lived in the solitary forest of York County, Pennsylvania during the 19th century. It was told that he lived off the land and slept in a cave after losing his wife at the close of the Civil War. Did a hermit named Joel Strong actually exist? Did he turn his land into a famous park before passing away? If so, what happened to the so park? This over here is owned by the water company. Bought the land and turned it into a park. And does his cave exist? Is the current occupant a descendant? So you lived there for what, 10 years, you said? Almost 10 years. Yeah. Join me as I investigate Joel Strong, the hermit of Helm Hills. Over the years, I heard a few of the older residents of York County referring to who they called the Hermit of Helm Hills. At the time, I figured that it was just a legend. But back in 2018, I saw a news article from York historian June Lloyd, which discussed Joel Strong, the Hermit of Helm Hills. I was surprised to see that these were always true stories about this hermit. June noted in the article that Strong passed away in 1905 and his property was sold to John Gable, who was another notable name in the area history, since he was the postmaster in Helm, and he owned one of the oldest properties in York County that allegedly hosted General George Washington and General Lafayette. June noted that a dam was to be built at the springs at Strong's Park, and the water piped down to Helm. I do not know if this came to fruition. Since then, I've attempted to locate the Hermit's Land and Strong's Park. Recently, I decided to start searching old newspaper articles and located several in reference to Joel Strong and his park. Joel Strong and his park were renowned around the state. I then located articles indicating that he passed away. A pinprick took him out. Blood poisoning. Then I found a few articles showing the property was up for sale. Eventually, I located articles indicating that a dam and water system would be built just as June Lloyd indicated, but I still did not know where the location was or if the dam was ever built. So I started to work backwards from there. After a good friend of mine introduced me to an old mayor of Helm Borough, he informed me that there was an old abandoned reservoir hidden in the woods of Helm. I started to search Google Maps and was shocked by what I found. This is crazy. I think I actually found this place. If you zoom into this patch of woods in the center here, there's actually channels and some type of odd structures back there. And I can't even see a road leading to this. It's like it's in the middle of nowhere. So I'm wondering, uh, you know, what the uh, the aerial photographs from back in the day, if I can find some historical aerial photographs to see what was there. It looks like a forested area in the middle of the township. And like I said, I don't even see a road leading to it. It has to be hidden. But yeah, I think this is it. There's structures going, uh, there's a channel leading into what looks like a large valley that could be a reservoir. So I think this is potentially my target area. I then reached out to the Kreutz Creek Preservation Society for assistance. Because here it's noted strong in 1876. So. Yeah, this one here is it's fascinating, so. Yeah, this came out of an album and lo and behold, I can't remember who's Yeah, album. I wonder who uh, if it was Pat. And that's what I wondered if the drugs kept any of this stuff or because he was married to you know, that drug, oh, Leah, Leah I can't drug. I find her. Really? And there, now that's the strong. There's the original. Oh. That's the mill. This is the old house. This was a distillery. And then there was a barn over here. This is all stuff that when the mill was Sprinkles Mill. Among many other fascinating finds at the Preservation Society, Katina confirmed that the area I was looking at was Strong's Park. She showed me a letter written in 1895 by a Katie Stoner. It was her homework assignment. She lived at 340 Friesville Road. Strong's Park is situated about one mile and a half from my home, surrounded on all sides by hills, and along one side is a large stream of water that rolls down over the rocks. A short distance from these gardens is an orchard with a large number of fruit trees. Within the park are three large springs, a large pond to the south with boats for all to use. At the northeast part of the park are three large rocks, one on each side, and the other rock on top of these two, forming a sort of cave, which is used by Strong as a place of shelter. There are three roads leading to the park.
I checked the property records of the area that I found. I then attempted to make contact with the owners of the property, but I was unsuccessful. I searched for the owners surrounding that property, but did not recognize the names. I checked the township zoning office and discovered that I actually knew someone in the family of the area surrounding this property. So I reached out to my friend, Gavin. Hey, Gavin. Barry, how are you? Good to see you. Tell me about the water system that's down here. Okay, so there's uh, a bunch of pipes throughout the property. Um, four, six inch old metal pipes. That's so percent. have you ever seen the actual reservoir that I can see on Google Maps? Looks like the structure of a reservoir. I have not. Okay. Yeah. All right. Is the the reservoir itself on your actual property or I was told it's gonna be on the neighbor's property just, just south of us. Actually we do have a like a spring house over here. We can go check out to the left. Okay, nice. So Pretty was this part of York Water Company then or so Butch, I think, purchased it in like 1988, and prior to him owning it, it was owned by the water company. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, wow. I can't say I actually like tried moving rocks and looking inside. For this here, you'll see a pipe running along the side. It's like straight down where you're oh, at. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh yeah, here it is, okay. Hmm. So that was, that was intact a couple years ago. Yep, I know uh, the old owner said you stick the side by side back and forth and this, this was his way of going back and forth. Wow. That's definitely, there's the channels for this thing. It's amazing. I'm just amazed by the craftsmanship that these channels are, are still standing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hey, Ted. But anyhow, if you look here, you see this? Yeah. Down there, there's another one. Okay. You can't see yeah. it because it's gone. It's literally buried. Oh, really? What is another waterfall it's like, like that? It's like this and then a, a ramp. And so do you know anything about the hell, the hermit and all that stuff? No, I never heard about so it. So he lived back here um, before this was built. So the last record we have with, with historical yeah, records. that place that burned down was finished in 1931. So. Okay, yeah, 1905 is when he passed away. Okay, um, so. But he passed away, in, but he, from 18, I'm sure they knew it. Well, he lived back here with his wife. She passed away right after the Civil War um, in 1869. And then he lived it back here by himself, uh, just, you know, as a hermit, just staying away from people and everything, so. There could be a cave. When I had a dream about it, it was way bigger than that. So what, what was your dream? But I found this entrance to this cave and I went in. Oh, and, and on the property here? Like this freaking big. Really? Yeah. <laughs> but if you look, there's. there It's hollow in there. Yeah, it could have been a collapse or something, maybe. I mean, if you look here, that's the same right here. There's a hole in there. Oh, you're right. I yeah, bet that's what it was. There very well could be a cave right there. At the northeast part of the park are three large rocks, one on each side, and the other rock on top of these two, forming a sort of cave, which is used by Strong as a place of shelter. But that's the right shape for a cave. So yeah. how long have you been here? I've been here since 97. So Gable, John Gable, um, he's the one that bought this this land. And the last record is that he was he was selling shares in 1906 to open up a gravity with fed water system, but everything disappears at that point. But apparently, here it is. Well, oh yeah, that, that reservoir over there was over 20 feet deep when I got six or seven years ago when Sandy came, I could walk under that bridge. Which, which bridge? Well, this one, wait, wait, wait you, you'll see. Originally, my wife told me that her relatives, her great uncle, used to put a dam in down here. There's this, a, a, a notched uh, okay. thing where you, and it had 
The mechanisms were stolen until I got here, but you could see where they were screwed into the cement with the okay. hoist and stuff. If you look, if you could see the negatives I used to have, right? This is a channel here, okay? There's at least six waterfalls down through here, buried. After here? From here. There's one about, about where that wall piece is. Oh. There's one, and 10 feet down, and 10 feet down. So what happened? Did a uh, sediment fill in down here? It that was going? Yeah. That's a shame. Yeah. But when I first got here, when that thing was 20 feet deep, empty, the first flood freaked me out because it's the middle of the night. I come out here, I'm like, what the hell is that noise? Yeah. The water, because of the way it all goes into that one opening, yeah. would literally, it literally was doing this. Oh, wow. And then sucking out the bottom. Really? <laughs> yeah, that was freaky looking. The that last was... flood, literally, the water was... Well, you see where that wire, bunch of wire looking stuff is on the left? Yeah. That's how high the water was last week. It doesn't go this way. that way, it comes this way. Up okay. over and goes right in that Oh, hole. look, there's a buck. Yeah, buck right there. Oh, no, I don't see it. Wow, it's a nice size, too. Yes, yeah, so there it is. The, uh, the reservoir. Yeah. The wood guy says, you're crazy. What are you doing driving down there? <laughs> oh, look at that guy. Oh, I forgot to do it. Yeah. Now, if you hold on a second, this ramp goes another 15 feet down. I've been down it. And it goes at the same angle, straight down like this. About 15 feet out there from here, Yeah. there's a stone wall that runs across there. Over there, there's a stone wall that separates that creek from this big reservoir that runs like this. So that the creek, right? Yeah. I'm telling you from negatives. Yeah. You, I haven't seen it for real. I've seen the very tips of it. Right, right. But it was notched out. I mean, whoever so this did is the reservoir here. This is this is literally this is the wall of the reservoir. The old stone wall is on top of it, right? It had. If you look yeah. here, there were metal poles the whole way around it. Wow. Down there on the other end, there's valves like this big where Helm used to run their water really? out through there. Yeah. Is there any way to get to that easily? Yeah, we could it. Well, easily, no. no. This is fascinating. I've been trying yeah. to find out where Strong's Park was, because I don't know if you know- I've never heard of it. All I know is this, after the flood around Sandy time, yeah. we found out that this is called the Freights Creek Valley Watershed. Oh, okay. Fast. So is that what happened to this or something This else? caught on fire because the electric company Spliced the wire into the house, basically, oh. and it lit the roof on fire when oh, I was in here. Shame. It looks like did a you ever, place, too. Did you ever live in here, Ted? Yeah, I lived in there for almost 10 years. Is that right, really? Well, how old is this? Any idea? Was well, finished in 1931. Wow, 31. <laughs> there were like 20 of them, and they had them big-ass brass taps on them. Yeah. But, uh, apparently he, uh, Built this and left the water run through the middle so it could make moonshine. He owned uh, York Valley Camlets, which was the first post office in York, oh. which is actually on my deed. Really? Yeah. You see, I wonder if that's related to John Gable, because Gable was the His name master. is John Gable Frank, so that, yeah. I mean, literally, he's yeah. J.G. Frank. So, so J.G., who is that? That's your... That's my wife's great uncle. Okay. Yeah. Right along that wall, it keeps going straight down through there. Right here, you can see this wall. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. I mean, there's a steps over there that went down into the reservoir like 50, like 10 feet down. I can show you right where they were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine this thing was 20 feet deep? I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it because it's right here. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it's buried. So there's stairs there? Yeah. Yeah, you can see the, see the stone walls right there. Yeah. Now, the stairs would be right, right here. Right here's where the stairs were. Yeah, it looks a little different than the table I made here. The water just bent that, ripped that cast iron, that wrought iron. <coughs> Bless you. Right Thank off you. the cement there. Right over here is a giant valley. You ought to be able to find it. There's one right there. Right there, see down there? Yeah, yep. Yeah. 
It's incredible. Jeez, there it is. Wow. But if you look over here now where it's at, you'll see where so there used to be a little building over there with a bunch of block and tackle stuff. Oh, okay. So spillway. Yeah. Huh. It's a four inch by four inch spillway. So there's part of the remaining tackle. See it there? Yeah. Apparently somebody stole the dam before I got here. And me, I, I got the bright idea to put four by four beams in there and dammed it up about. Well, somewhere down here, actually, they were boating. There was like a pond or something. But, but this was before the reservoir. This is when Strong had his park here. It was called Strong's Park. People came all around from York City. Uh, Phil, the Philadelphia Inquirer has articles about it. He used to bring people up here. They picnic, all kinds of stuff. But they would float around in a pond out here somewhere. But then when he died, he sold it to Gable and he built this here. So, yeah, this is fascinating. So this wasn't? No, when Strong's Park was here, this wasn't here. Gate, well, so Gable applied for it. He actually sold thousands of shares in 1906 to install a gravity-fed water system from here. So, well, so that answers that. This place actually exists, which is uh, it's pretty fascinating. This is actually a reservoir here. Still not 100% sure where the uh, where the cave would have been, but. Does look like that has potential for being something there. Unfortunately, I did not find the cave, but I found Joel Strong's home, his park, and John Gable's reservoir. This was home for the Hermit of Hellum Hills from 1890 until his death in 1905 from blood poisoning. While investigating this story, I ran into many other questions and theories that I would like to eventually investigate. I found the main road to the area, but where are the other two roads? Legend says that one of the houses near this main road has a carving of Strong in the basement. Do any of Strong's belongings still exist from the sale of his estate after his death? What was the prolonged illness that killed Katie Stoner at such a young age? 